What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with episode 25 of the Fight House podcast. It's me, Jason Sutcliffe, with Tristan Ketty. And we got a good one. We're going to kick things off with Aaron Pico. He's getting ready to compete at uh, Bellator 183 coming up real soon. Adam Piccolotti, he's also competing on the same card. Looking forward to that conversation. Cool guy, super good conversation. Uh, Benito Lopez, dude went to war with Steven Peterson to pick himself up a UFC contract. So we'll talk to him, see what's going on. Uh, a few weeks removed, how he's feeling and where he's at and what's coming up next and all that good stuff. Zoo on short notice. Zoo and Yenwu caught him on short notice. He'll be coming with us from Pittsburgh. Uh, talking to us about his fight Saturday. He's got a real tough one ahead of him, so we'll be talking about that. Uh, we're going to close out the show. we got two big interviews tonight with uh, the two LFA champions competing on September 23rd. Derek Krantz and Andrea KGB Lee will both join us today to talk about their upcoming fights with Jamie Thornton. That's Andrea Lee fighting Jamie Thornton, and Derek Krantz is going to take on James Nakashima. Looking forward to both those fights. Should be good ones. Uh, we'll talk to them and see what they feel about it. Stay with us. We've got a great one today. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Aaron Piku, who's getting ready to make his return to the Bellator cage. What's going on, Aaron? How you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, everything's going good. Um, I feel ready to go. Just waiting for uh, September 23rd to come around. Absolutely, man. I mean, this is going to be your, your second trip into the cage. The first one didn't go your way. Um, after watching it, did you kind of fix some things? Like, what did you see... It, when you gone back and looked at the fight, yeah, just the biggest thing for me was that I didn't uh, that I didn't relax in there. I was uh, I needed more time just to relax. I, I rushed in and got hit with that uppercut mm -hmm. straight into a uh, into a choke, which he did a good job of uh, securing. But uh, you know, I just need to relax in the more. I have all the skill sets in the world to be a champion, mm -hmm. but now I just need to relax and get the cage experience. That's the biggest thing. Uh, you can't train, train for that. You actually just have to do it. So I need as many fights as I can and get my feet wet, and I'll be ready to go. Definitely, man. I'm really looking forward to this fight. You know, you've changed camps for this one. You're at the body shop now. Um, is that a full-time move for you, or is that is that just for this fight? What's this, What happened there? With Antonio? What's that? I'm sorry, say that a question. Uh, sorry, question sorry. Again. I said you, you had moved up, down but... to the body shop um, from, you were at AKA originally, correct? And, and you moved to the body shop. Is that a permanent move for you? Uh, I was never at the at AKA. Oh, okay. um, I was just kind of like going all over the place. But oh, okay. uh, being at the body shop is per permanent. Um, yeah, I love being with Antonio. I love being with the, with the guys down there. So it's close to my house. And uh, I, I feel it's going well. It fits really, really good for me, especially Antonio's style. Yeah, definitely. You guys have. And a... I've known Antonio since I was six years old, and, and, and AJ. So it's, it's like family. I've known them for for a while, so and it's good. How did you meet them? Uh, well, Antonio had like this was years ago. I was only like honestly, uh, I was a kid. Uh, he had a uh, wrestling program out of the body shop, so I would go in there. And he had really good practices, so I would be there wrestling with AJ and all the kids there. We all get together at the body shop, and Antonio would run the practices. So it was cool. They were always tough. I remember always, <laughs> if you wanted to go get a good workout, you went to the body shop. Definitely, definitely. Well, they got a good, they got a, a good group in there. What's it like to work with a guy like AJ? That's kind of just a little bit ahead of you in your in your journeys through through the mixed martial arts. Uh, what's it like to have a guy yeah. like that there with you? It's great. It's it's cool. It's good to see a guy a guy that's young. And able to put it all together, and especially in training, he's able to throw up so many submissions from the bottom, from the top. He's an overall all-around fighter that which, um, makes you better. That's something that I need to see, the kicks. The, uh, just a, to be a good fighter, you need to see that. So very fortunate to have him in the room uh, showing me everything and then have his, his dad right alongside, uh, alongside us, teaching us and guiding us. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better partner. He's obviously going out there and winning, so uh, it's working. Yeah, and, and you know your 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 uh, your next fight. Talking about well, what you got coming up now, Justin Lin uh, at Bellator 183. Um, you're making the drop to featherweight. Um, is was that something that you had been considering before the fight with Freeman, or is it just something that came in after you just changed it up? Uh, yeah, I was considering it both, but I think after the fight is when I really decided to go down. Is it because I'm really not that big? I was eating and eating and eating to keep that weight on for the fight. Mm -hmm. Naturally, my body is really not that big. I'm not a 55 pounder, but <clears throat> after the fight, when I started to just eat normal, uh, my weight was, you know, 
around 160, 158. So I was like, hey, I'm going to just go 45. Um, so that's when I really, guys that are, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready for 55 yet as far as, uh, body wise. There's guys that are 6'1 dropping from, you know, some serious weight. You Definitely. know, I, I don't really have, I have to eat to make the, make the weight. So, um, that was a big, that was a big thing for me. Definitely. Um, so how disciplined are you going to have to be to make 145? Or is that something you think is going to come easily, just an easy cut? Uh, easy cut. To be honest with you, I can make weight right now if I if I needed to. I'm, I'm not far out at all. Uh, I watch my weight all the time. I eat the right things. Um, honestly, I don't really even watch my weight. I just eat the right things, and my weight just hovers uh, where I need it to be. So that, that that's good. I try to always eat really good. Just I feel good, especially with all the training that I do. It would be impossible for me to do what I do if I didn't eat right. So sure. for good me, it's, it's pretty easy. Good fuel, right? <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. You need it. Yeah, definitely. Um, what advantages do you feel like you're going to have at 145 that you weren't going to be able to enjoy at lightweight when you step in there with these guys or, or <clears throat> uh, Lynn, in, Lynn in particular? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is guys are going to be more more um, my, my height. Um, I need to just... Guys at, at at 155, they're just a little bit longer than me, a little bit taller, and not to say I can't beat them. I just need more experience and and, and see more styles like mm-hmm. that. You know, being around AJ has really opened my eyes to be able to adapt to more more of that style. I need more training, but for the most part, I feel really good at 45. This is this is my weight for a long time. This is where I'll be at for for quite some time. This is um, not a hard cut for me or anything like that. So it's good for me. Uh, you're you're saying, so you're um you're getting ready to step in there. J- Justin Lin's seven and three. He's got a bit more experience than you. Is that something you're worried about? Like like getting in there with these guys with a bit more experience? Uh, I've been mean, definitely you know it, it is what it is. You got more experience, but I feel the training camp this time around has been has been great. Mm-hmm. Especially with Antonio, I have a, with the two months that we've been working together, it's I've really come a long way. So I'm I feel very very confident that uh. Yeah, well, yeah. I did. I didn't mean to make well, it sound I sorry. To I didn't mean to use the word worried too. It was kind of came out wrong. I just meant more like. Um, oh no, no, I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's all good. I, yeah, I know exactly what you meant. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in any fight, there's always a sense of, you know, always a little bit worried, a little bit nervous. But that's what's good. It's what keeps you on guard. So yeah, I don't take offense to it at all. What, what What do you think you're going to see from uh, from Lynn in the cage? What are you expecting? Um, probably just. Uh, Overall, I think he's ready for anything. He can stand at you, he can grapple, he, you know, he stands just everywhere. So, um, I think he's just, just going to be patient, solid guy, and he's got to be, do my thing, relax, and, um, yeah, go in there and, and, and relax is the biggest thing for me, not be over, overconfident and just walk in there. I just have to just do my thing, and I'm sure, um, you know, he's got his game plan, but we got ours, and I feel ours is more effective. Do you did did that happen last time? Were you a bit too confident when you went there? Went in there, like because you know you coming up, you had a lot of a lot of push, a lot of hype. Um, you had a lot of success both in boxing and w- with wrestling. Did you have a bit of a, of an overconfidence issue? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not. I mean, I was. I mean, I was. I trained really hard. I mean, I trained right. great. Trained well. So I was just really well prepared. And I was like, you know, this guy. I knew he had, he had weapons, but. You know, he woke me up real soon. You know, he landed that punch, and it was like, damn. You know, this fight, this fight, is, this fight game is for real. Anything can happen. You know, yep. he trained really, really hard. So I needed to be just more aware. More, more, more. The biggest thing for me is aware. You know, I, I wasn't aware. I was, I mean, I'm so new to the game. So I think it's coming up with, with awareness, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like a, like a little puppy, you know, like they're still learning everything. They're not going to do certain, they're going to do certain things and then they're going to maybe trip and fall. But, you know, next time around, they're going to be like, okay, well, if I step here, I'm going to fall here. So the same thing with MMA, I need to be a little bit more patient, cautious. And, um, and I'm still new to the game, but I'm going to get that, that exposure and that, uh, ring time that I, that I need and everything will be good. Do you think it's a little tougher for you, given um, like your name coming in? Like most guys would, you know, they quietly get to climb up the undercard, and you know, no one would really, you know, see too too much of them. And then eventually they would work their way to that. But you've come in, and you don't get that, you know. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, for sure, definitely is hard. Um, But I'm in a really good uh, situation as far as my career and um, everything that I'm doing. I mean, 
it is definitely hard. Uh, everything that you do, there's people watching every fight. Uh, from now on, everybody's going to be watching, which is a good thing. There's a lot of people that want to be in my situation, so sure. I need to, uh, you know, I need to. You know, I, I, I'm appreciative, you know. I, as we speak right now, there's people working to be in this situation, so um, I, I'm happy to be in this in this spot, but it just requires a lot of work. I'm okay with that because I don't mind in. I don't mind putting in the work. Definitely, and you've been doing it your whole life pretty well. Um, is there a certain yeah. freedom that comes with, like, you know, like obviously you didn't want to take the loss. Nobody wants to take the loss. But when, like, when you're coming in with your hype and, and like, the name that just had that buzz, right? I mean, everyone was waiting for your debut. Yeah. Does it kind of free you a little bit? I mean, the, the like taking the, the, the like. Possibly, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, no problem. The first thing that possibly happened in 24 did happen. So, I mean. At the end of the day, nothing, you know, I, I've seen it. I've right. seen what can happen. And, and um, for sure, there probably is a little bit. I mean, I've gotten my first loss out of the way. Some people, that comes later in their career. But I know what to expect. So, yeah, for sure, I think this is going to help me in the long run, 100%. Um, I know you've been working with Freddie Roach. I've seen him. I've been following your Instagram and stuff. Um, he called you his new fighter on his Instagram. How much work do you do with, with Freddie? Uh, I was doing a lot of work. Um, now that I'm, I was getting close to the fight, not as much, uh, but I was part of Miguel Cotto's training camp as a sparring partner, so I was there six days a week and then training with Antonio. So, um, But now as the fight got closer, I was you know, not as much with Freddie, but I'm with, um, with Antonio focusing on the MMA, but I was saying I do spend a lot of time with Freddie Roach. And what, what has he done for your game, and, and how, how invaluable were those rounds you got in with Miguel Cotto doing his training? Oh, it's very valuable. I mean, Freddie's a he is a mastermind when it comes to boxing. There's a lot of things that, that people don't know, uh, you know, about boxing. Is it, there's so much to learn, and like how to throw a punch, certain things. When you should throw a punch, um, the whole ring generalship is, is super important in boxing. A lot of people think that you just go in there and throw punches, but there's so much that go that goes into it. You know, like like cutting down your opponent, transitioning, you know, getting them to the corner. Like, why should you throw a certain punch? Should you wait to throw a punch? Or, you know, there's so much to learn that, yeah. that I still don't know, but Freddie's been teaching me a lot. And just, just to be a part of Miguel Cotto's training camp was, was awesome. I mean, just yeah. seeing a, a true professional at work and just see the way that he does things and, and be, be able to be a part of that close circle because he, he keeps his camp very, very small, which, which I like. But, um, yeah, I was just very fortunate that he was able to give me pointers and teach me certain things. It was awesome. And then for him to go out there and win his fourth world title or fifth world title um, was uh, was really cool. It, it felt special because I was, I was part of it the whole training camp. So I was very, very happy that he won. Yeah, what, what's the biggest thing you took from the experience in a whole? Um, I think the biggest thing for him is just... Um, I just seeing him the way he does things is his whole approach to the game. He comes in, he's very professional. He does what he needs to do, and he's very consistent. He's always there. He has his team, his small circle around him, and you know they all do what they need to do, and they they just really have a really cool game plan, and it's just really cool. It's really good to see what a true professional should be like. Definitely, he's been around a long time. He's definitely a legend of the sport. Um, one other thing I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about just before you know before we, we wrap things up about um, about a, you're entering the featherweight division now about a year ago you had a little bit of back and forth on social media with James Gallagher is that still a fight you're looking for? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely it's probably it's bound to happen. I mean, we're both going going for the title. Um, but yeah, for sure, I feel like he, he doesn't like to take on challenges all that much. I mean, he calls that AJ McGee and then doesn't doesn't deliver. So it's kind of it kind of kind of sucks, but uh, I'd like to see him fight AJ McKee first. He's got a lot of beef with him, and and we'll see. But I definitely feel that it will happen in the future. It will be bound to happen if we're both going for the title. It will happen. You know, one quick question, man. So now you you're put yourself like you automatically jump in the thick of things, regardless of what happened in your last fight. Like you, your name garners like garners that attention. Like you're you're there. People are paying attention. Um, so you're going to be yeah. in that in that group with Gallagher McKee. Does that kind of step on AJ's toes if you guys train together? The fact that like you're kind of in that cluster of title hunters. Uh, to be honest, 
you know, not really at all. You know, I mean, we've already made a reason. You know, we're not, we're not fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've known each other since kids. You see, at yeah. my house, you know, my family and friends. We, and it's just at the end of the day. I mean, I, mean, I would rather be a friendship more than you know, in a man. They, they're really good people. And him and his dad, I've known them for a while. They're good people. Um, and this is a business. Everybody, you know. Oh, you need to fight this guy. There's some people that you just don't fight, and, and AJ is one of them. He's a good guy. He's a training partner, and I'm not there to be, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna fight AJ. It's just no, we're there to get, we're there to get each other better. And to be honest with you, I've never even, we've never even really talked about it. It's just kind of on those things when just understood. You win the yeah. title, I mean, I'll be more than, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, he's pretty big too. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't really know how long they'll be at 45 or 50, or he might be at 55. I'm not, I'm not a guy. So he's pretty big, bigger than me. So yeah, he's a big guy. We'll have to see you at when that one, when uh, he goes down. Um, All right, man. Look. Down that road. But now nah, we won't be fighting. Hey, man, that's good to hear. I like loyalty. Loyalty over everything, right? That's a, It's definitely a good way to go. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, man. For I, sure. I mean, it's good. That's why I asked the question, this, you know, because I was curious. Is crazy. What's that? I said, this business is crazy. Some, I mean, Fair and enough. Sometimes they like that. They want you to turn so you can so they can sell a fire. But I mean, a friendship. Or from we're from Southern California. And he's from Long Beach. I'm from Whittier. They're right next to each other. I mean, at the end of the day, let's just go take on the world. Fair there's, enough. There's many guys to go pick on rather than us fighting. You know what I mean? Let's just go take on what we need to do, do what we need to do for our careers, and, and have a good time with them. Represent Southern California. I like it. Um, one last question, man. I'm a betting man, so w- w- what should I put my money on for the fight? How do you how do you see it finishing? Man, I, to be honest with you, I feel I feel uh, you know I take my time and do what I need to do. I, I feel I can get it done in two. In two, Pico and yeah, two. You guys heard it here. Too. I love it. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad it could come together. And best of luck in the cage, man. Uh, we'll be rooting for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. All right. All the All best. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. But it's good to turn that camera back on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Oops. It was uh, – He's a good kid, man. I hope he I hope it works out for him, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to see see him lose, but I do feel that there's something freeing in it for him. That's why I asked him, you know. Yeah. I think that once you get it out of the way, like once you start to establish it, you know, when you get to eight and oh nine and oh ten and oh. Yeah, it's 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 weird it's a weird thing where it's just like Bellator has like kinda of dropped the ball dropped the ball a little bit on him because it's just like you have to you have to take your prospects and like you like a lot of people in other sports you see it they take a couple of years in, in, yeah. in, the, in the minor you know, leagues you know you know what the problem is is that this happens like when your name's big right yeah because if your name's big they can't do that they can't put well, you down the, like the on the money free. money's the bottom line so when they go oh he's an amazing wrestler and he's like a golden gloves boxer like credited a bunch of other bunch of other things as well he's won a tons of different things yeah they, they go oh he's fine i'll just throw him in there with somebody's experience he must be that good but it's just like the, the octagon and the cage that kind of cage is just a different thing it's a That's whole other very beast. different thing yeah very different thing yeah now it's it's like you could be a, an incredible boxer and an incredible wrestler but if you can't mix it all together and defend that takedown yeah. it's in this it's, it's in the night. being it's about being seamless you know you see it with really good well-rounded fighters it's yeah. about being seamless in what you do the transitions from grappling to striking and striking to grappling and all that shit but like when we had we had antonio on like a couple of weeks ago he he, he made a he he said it well when he's just like I don't necessarily train everybody the same way I like that I don't train them to be me yeah I take their skill sets and I and I and I make them better and I t- just teach them the things that they need to know so they can use those skill sets yeah and like he that sounds like it's you know one of the reasons why probably Pico's there you know and other than obviously as the family things and the family plus too is Antonio's a wrestler he's a smothering wrestler Pico's a good wrestler like it probably makes sense for him to be there probably exactly learn a and lot beyond um, the fam beyond the family stuff too like he could go anywhere he wants he could trade anywhere he wants yeah you know? yeah definitely so, definitely you know, definitely yeah. Um, next up, we got. Uh, we're gonna stick with Bellator. We have um, Brent, uh, we have Adam Piccolotti on the on the phone with us. He's gonna be talking about his upcoming fight. So stay with us. We're gonna have Adam when we come back, and uh, we look forward to the conversation. Talk to you guys in a minute. White House fans, we're back with Adam Piccolotti, who's getting ready to take on Yamochi at uh, Bellator 183. What's going on, Adam? Welcome to the show, bud. 
Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, happy to be back again. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been a while since you've been in the cage. You had a little issue with an injury. Um, what's it like to be getting close, man, and be getting back to getting in there? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I've just been freaking itching to get in there for the past 10 months, you know, so to finally get my chance, I'm, uh, I couldn't be more happy right now. Yeah, man. You know, you were supposed to have a huge contender fight with Brent Primus. Things went his way. We all know what, what happened in his wrath. And now you're getting ready to come back. How important is it, for, is, it, is it for you to have a really strong performance and kind of remind everybody? I mean, Brent Primus or no Brent Primus, it's right. always important for me to have a strong performance. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I'm right there. I feel like I'm right there in the contendership. Um, that world championship belt is always my goal. So um, whoever's in the way of that, you know, that's that's the most important part. So first it's Goichi, and then it's you know whoever whoever's next after that, I'm good with. You know, I know you uh, you were having some back issues that we had talked about before. How's everything with the back? How's everything going? I you know I I'm very lucky and fortunate to have gotten good treatment for it because right now it's like zero. Like I don't oh, feel nice. it. I don't think about it. It's completely gone for me. Has it been that way for the whole camp? Like everything's been good? You haven't had no issues at all? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was starting to think that I could come back. Like I wanted to fight in like July. Like that was my kind of like goal. And through that kind of like pre-test camp, I was like feeling it and stuff. And so by Bellator kind of like almost making me fight here in September, uh, just because of the way the schedule and worked, it, it actually really worked in my favor. Cause now like I thought it was good before, but now I know it's good. Definitely. You know, it had, Going through something like that, have you had to make any? Have you made any like changes to your training to prevent it from happening in the future? And like, or, or little maintenance things maybe you're doing different. Like, is there anything you're doing differently in your training? Yeah, you know what? There's uh, there's definitely some things like uh, my back was, you know, it was a herniated disc, so it was kind of one incident that actually herniated that disc. But yeah. it was a long time coming. Um, it was all my inverting jujitsu, getting smashed, all that kind of thing. You know, that's all just promotes herniation and. To, de to degenerates all the discs in there and stuff. So I've been, you know, a little bit more cautious with some of like the more flexible motions, um, especially with heavier partners. Um, but yeah, even more on top of that, I've been working with this super amazing uh, strength conditioning coach. His name's Mike Salemi. And he's been covering like my durability and my diet aspects of things. So I've been incorporating Aldoas. I don't know if you guys have heard of those. No, I have not. Um, it's kind of like to break it down super simply, it's like a yoga pose. Okay. But they are like really specified. You move your body, put it in a certain position and it, it's meant to stretch out the fascia, like the fascial lines through your body. Yeah. And it's like super specific. So like there's a really um, effective one for me for the L5S1. And that's one that I've been focusing on a bunch because that's the disc that I herniated, but also using it to apply all over. I've like felt my neck strength increase, my neck health increase, because my neck's always been a uh, problem area for me as well. So um, kind of incorporating those mixed in with like a super healthy diet, you know, in taking a bunch of like collagen and and good um you know binding agents things like that it's been uh i think it's been really effective i feel stronger and more durable than ever it sounds like like um you really started like you really focused on like the maintenance part uh, of it like did this really open your eyes to to how important it is to have like all these things and all your ducks in a row so to speak yeah totally totally you know uh like it's i say this i say this on my blog and i say this all the time it's like through my whole career, everybody's told me, you know, listen to your body, don't overtrain, you know, and it's like, as a young, hungry fighter, you hear that stuff and it's kind of one ear, in one ear, out the other, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I get it, you want me to be healthy, but at the same time, I need to train, I need to prepare, I need to be, yeah. you know, absolutely ready to jump in the cage with some killer, you know what I mean? So, um, I've kind of been able to take it to heart a little bit more. Uh, for me, the worst thing that could happen is to get re-injured in, in any facet, whether it's my back or anything else. Sure. So, yeah, I've, I've really taken it to heart and, and incorporated the durability, the diet, and like I said, the aldoas, the stretches, you know, a little bit more focus on warm-ups, cool-downs, all that type of thing. You know, you're getting ready to step in there with uh, with Gordy Yamochi, tough guy, experienced guy. Um, are you at all concerned about ring rust? It's been a while since you've been in there. Do you feel like, like a, is that something that concerns you? Or do you feel like that, I that mean, would go? I've had a couple uh, ten month layoff stints in my career yep. and I haven't felt too much too much ring rust, too much uh, you know I I don't think so. You know what I mean? I'm I'm more excited than anything. Yeah. I, I get nervous, sure, but I'm just really excited to get in there and mix it up and like with this time off it's always pros and cons you know yeah. okay maybe there might be a little ring rust but i've had the chance to improve so much i've been doing a ton of studying a ton of learning a ton of drilling you know it's like when i wasn't able to spar like when i just started to coming back okay i can't spar but what can i do drill 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 so i just took all this time to just get better and i feel like 
me when I fought Gertz versus me when I'm fighting Goichi, it's going to be a completely different fighter already. What do you think? Where do you think we're going to see the biggest, um, or, or from what you can tell us, anyway? Don't wanna, you know, you don't want to give away too much, but what's the biggest growth you think that we we will see in your game when we see you step oh. in the cage? You know, it's hard to say. Um, my jiu-jitsu, I feel like it's always getting better, uh, but it's kind of one of those things like when, like I feel I have a pretty high level of jiu-jitsu, so gains in the jiu-jitsu won't be as noticeable as the gains in something that wasn't quite as high to start with, which is like my stand-up. Right. Um, so, you know, I think you guys will see a more complete fighter. Uh, I feel like I'm really complete as it is. I feel like I showed that with my Brandon Gertz fight, but uh, but yeah, even more so, I'm really hoping to hurt this guy on the feet. Um, speaking of, so what do you what do you know about him as an opponent, and like where do you feel like you guys match up when you start breaking skill to skill? Um, you know, he's kind of been known for his jujitsu. Also, uh, he's gotten a lot of kind of slick armbar triangles, that kind of thing off the off the bottom. Um, he's got his fair share of submissions off the back, um, kind of similar to me. I feel that. Uh, we're pretty well matched all around, you know. He's got a pretty good stand-up style too. It's not like he doesn't know what he's doing up there. Um, I feel like it's a pretty good matchup, and it's just going to be who's a better, more well-rounded fighter, who's going to bring the game plan, who's going to bring the conditioning, and uh, bring the mind state on the night. You know. What do you feel like is the one thing? If you if you had to do if you have to do one thing extremely well, what is that to walk out with a W more than anything else? Um. <laughs> fight well <laughs> you know it's yeah, everywhere yeah. it's it's so everywhere and it's so evolved now you know i i can't say really just go in there and use my jujitsu because right. you know it's 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 so everywhere it's i'm gonna put him in places where he's gonna have to make decisions and whichever decision he makes that's where i'm gonna take it to so you know what i mean if i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna put pressure on him with my hands he's gonna have to make a decision does he want to shoot does he want to pull guard you know and then we're gonna go from there um so i think dictating the pace you know controlling where the fight happens um and just you know being the more aggressive, well-rounded, uh, like I like to say, aggressive counterfighter. That's yeah. that's how I like to be. So getting in his face and allowing him to make the mistakes. Um, how, when you visualize the fight, how do you see it ending? How do you, do you see yourself finishing the fight? I always like TKOs. You know, I mean, ground and pound is is, is where it's at. That's my. That's to me. That's like the ultimate finish. You know what I mean? I love submitting people. I love choking people. But when you can hold them down, they can't move, and you're gonna just smash down elbows, punches, and stuff like that. Um, when I see a guy like Oichi, like it's either gonna be there or off his back. Um, but don't be surprised if you see a, a flash knockout too. I've been waiting to get one of those. Nice little elbow or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, following the victory, will you have a call out? Is that your thing? You know, will, will you wanna will you wanna put a name out there and? Uh Try to get yourself yeah. that thing. Who are you looking at? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, that main event's really interesting. I've always wanted to fight Benson Henderson just out of respect. Right. Um, I think you said that before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, like, who doesn't want to fight that guy? I even walked up to him at a jiu-jitsu tournament years and years ago. And, you know, with much respect, that's what I'm looking, man. I'm in your division. I hope to run into you one day. And this was, like, back when he was a threat in the UFC. You yeah. know, like, I can't remember if he was a champ or not at that time. But um, I've always wanted to fight that dude because uh, I do have respect for him. I like to fight Bipple, you know, he got that headbutt on Josh, I don't like it. Um, I'd like to get a little redemption for my buddy. Uh, you know, any of these guys, any of these guys really. The 55 pound division's mine, it's just a matter of time. Um, do, you know, you, you're going in there, you got an undefeated record, it's nine and zero. now you start to get, you know, you start to move into the contender pile, you know, you're not really a prospect anymore, you're starting to move, you're moving it, you've moved into that contender pile. Um, does that, do you start to feel pressure as these fights come on and like, you know, when you got one and oh, two and oh, it's like, okay, yeah, but then it's like, the fight means so much more when you get to like 10 and 11 you're talking title shots and things do you feel that pressure sure you know i, I feel pressure no matter what though um it's like i've said this in, in previous interviews before it's like a lot of times like i'll have to ask my girl like wait what's my record again like <laughs> it's something that like I literally never think about you know so um every fight's the most important fight that's that's always been my mentality and uh you know, it's it's cool because there's a little bit more publicity. You know, I see myself popping up on the the Bellator Instagram and Twitter and all this and that. You know, so that that's cool. You know, but I don't know if it adds pressure or if it just makes me more excited to fight. You know, uh, either way, I'm I'm super stoked to be in the position I'm in. Yeah, man, it's got to be a good feeling to walk around and like see these things, your face up there, and, like just the whole. That's got to be an exciting thing. <laughs> yeah, man. you know, I'm a little I'm a little bitter. You know, I want to be on that on that main uh, that main poster. You know, so that's the next step. It's coming, man. It's coming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, th th I guess that leads into my, my one question I wanted to ask you. Where do you feel like at, at, at 10 and 0, a win over uh, Yamuchi is a huge win. The guy's got a, a great record. He's very experienced. Where do you think that leaves you? Um, it leads me to clean out the rest of the guys that I need to while waiting for a title shot. You know, it's 
that's really, there's really no way around it, you know. Um, like I said, that belt will be mine. That division is going to be mine. And I, I pretty much see this. I'm going to fight all those guys eventually anyways, whether I have the belt, you know, and they're challenging me or, or not. It's either way. It's fine by me. You know, let's let's get these guys out of the way and uh, and get myself in that number one position. And then and then bring on all the, you know, whoever's coming up next. Um, what kind of timetable do you give yourself for getting the, tele- for getting the belt? Um, 2018, you know, I don't see it going much longer than that. I do want to fight again, you know, as, as soon as possible after this fight you know uh you know god willing everything goes well and i don't you know suffer anything serious yeah. uh, i'd like to fight again you know but before the end of the year um and, and kind of keep the ball rolling you know it's it's that time you know i'm, I'm 29 now i'm hungry i'm, I'm conditioned I'm, I'm prepped i'm skilled i'm i'm, I'm ready to go you know it's uh, now or never let's go you know um one thing I noticed too, besides fighting, you've gotten into vlogging, man. You become quite the vlogger. You got the self-defense <laughs> videos going up. You're doing your thing. Um, yeah. What was the motivation for you doing like the women's self-defense videos and the and the video blogs, etc., things like that? All the defense videos. You know what? Um, we have this opportunity as fighters, and there's not this huge backing for us. You know what I mean? Like, even though I'm a signed fighter now, and you know I get paid better than maybe I thought I would have, you know, like starting this thing, it's still nothing great. You know, you have yeah. to fight four or five times a year to really actually start coming up ahead. Um, so I don't want to say it's financial, but I also, it's, I'm taking advantage of all the opportunities I can possibly sure. get. You know what I mean? I, I really want to yeah. tell my story. I feel like I have a ton of knowledge that I've gained over these 10 years. I don't want to stay quiet. I like talking, you know, and I, and I like influencing people and helping people when I can. Um, so. I feel that I, I'm a, a good teacher. You know, I like to teach. And so that's where the technical Tuesdays come from. You know, yeah. I like to share what, share what I know that's and, you know, see videos. what people think about it and stuff. Thank you, man. Thank you. And then, and then the vlog, you know, I like, I like, I like watching vlogs myself. Yeah. And so I, there's really no, nobody out there in the MMA world that's doing their own, you know, there's yeah. like the embedded stuff like that. But, you know, I'm trying to really just set myself a, a aside from the sheep you know what i mean i'm gonna be the wolf i don't want to i don't want to follow the, the crowd i want to do my own thing and uh um, and set the bar for other people to follow all right man listen before i let you go take a minute man plug your stuff go go at it you got a whole bunch of stuff that's going <laughs> on man get it done yeah we got a bunch of stuff going so uh first of all my social media is all at adam piccolotti uh, nice and easy i'm posting daily you know i'm trying to get my twitter up that's one thing i've been working on engage with me i'm happy to engage back um and then the, the YouTube channel, you guys, I release a new vlog episode every Monday, kind of covering what I did that whole week, training, um, pre-fight medicals, whatever you can imagine, diet, all that good stuff. Uh, then I'm releasing my uh, technical Tuesdays every Tuesday, uh, breaking down techniques. And I take suggestions. So if you guys have stuff you want to see, let me know. And those are both found at my YouTube channel at The Bomb MMA. Sweet, That's man. It. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone tune in. You know, uh, September 23rd, he's going to take on Gordy Yamochi. Uh, Bellator 183, best of luck. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. You're always available, man. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. I appreciate your time. All right, man. Have a good one and uh, good luck. You too. Thank you. Bye. All right. It's a good card, man. 183 is a really good card. Yeah, it is coming up, man. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I like to see him get back in there, but I really want to see Primus and him go at it, man. Yeah. I wanted so that close. fight they, they, so bad. They dropped. He dropped out because of the inner, inner injury, right? Yeah, his black injury. Yeah. 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 It Sorry. was like, but I mean, I, oh man, I wanted. This, it was so. You know, I could have been him, man. I love any time you get two undefeated prospects yeah. that are just going, and it's like one he's going, one he's not. You yeah. know, we're gonna yeah. find out what this is. I think Ch- Chandler's knee was gonna go that night. I don't. I don't want to take it away from him, actually. You know what? Pre- premise. He might have. He might have done the damage in the fight, but at the end of the day, it's like he, he, it could have been him. You know, it's, it, that must get. Yeah, must yeah, eat yeah, it yeah. A bit. That's why I, I asked him. Like, I didn't want to get too into it because I don't think you know bringing it up repeatedly, right? Like, yeah. oh, this happened to you. This happened to you. Uh, yeah, you, you, have to a- you have to ask it, but it's like you don't want to dig at it. You know, mm-hmm. he's got so much other stuff going on. It's like you could ask him, you know, a million other things, right? Yeah. So you know. Um, Speaking of prospects, another undefeated prospect. Uh, we're going to have Benito Lopez on the show. Guy had a crazy fight with Steven Peterson. Yeah. Um, I think it was a week, week seven, I'm pretty sure. Um, great fight. The great fight. They went to war. Um, we're going to have him on. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's up next, uh, how he's feeling, you know, everything, everything like that. So we got lots of stuff to talk about. Stay with us. We'll be back with Benito Lopez.
What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Benito Lopez, newly signed to the, Bant the UFC Bantamweight division after his big win over Steven Peterson on Week 7 of the Contender Series. What's going on, Benito? Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man. Glad to have you. How's everything been since the fight? How you doing? Uh, it's been great, man. Um, been on Cloud 9. I've just been uh, training, staying busy. Yeah, man. You know, I noticed uh, you went home to a little celebration, man. I seen you had a little barbecue celebration when you got home. Um, UFC and all them were there. What, what was that like? How was that? Uh, man, I had like a, in my town, I have a lot of support in my hometown in uh, Oroville. And I just made a post on all my social media outlets and uh, told everyone to come by. And there was a bunch of people who came, came by and the UFC was with me for the day film. What, what were they filming for? Just like stock footage? For they're filming a few of the guys who won the contender series got and got the contract. They're just doing like a day in the life to help like promote them and show oh, okay. the fans who they brought. In. Yeah. Nice man, nice. I'm um, speaking of the fight. It was an absolute war, man. You definitely didn't take uh, the easy way into the into the UFC. That's for sure. Um, what was Thank the fight you. like? I mean, what, what did you think of the fight when you went back and watched it? Uh, it was a war, man. It was just a, a gritty fight, you know. Um, I think I definitely could have done some things a lot better in the fight, you know. But it is what it is. I mean, it's just a learning experience, and I'll be better uh, next time. Um, it was a tough fight. Yeah, man. Did, were you? Did you know much about Steven Peterson? Because I mean, he's known for those kind of fights. Did you? Did you go in there expecting this kind of a war? Did you know about him? Yeah, no, I knew he was good, and he 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 does get in wars. He's just durable has a great cardio and all that. I knew about that, but the last few guys I fought all never been finished or at least never been knocked out. So um, I, I didn't let that get in my head too much, you know. I, I really did think I was going to finish him and finish him in the first. And uh, even in the fight, when I landed some things in the first, I... Hello? Are you there? We have technical difficulties. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Even in the first, you were saying? Oh, even in the first, I landed a few shots, you know, and I thought that I was uh, a few shots away from finishing him. I just didn't land the, the right shots to get him out of there, but he was tough, man. He just kept coming forward. He kept eating some, some really hard shots and kept coming. He was beast. What did you What did you think when he went, when he kind of, because you know, he's known for, like I said, he's known for that. What did you think when he kind of went into zombie mode and he's just coming forward? And did you take your foot off the gas a little bit? Because it was kind of like, okay, this guy's super durable. Like, I'm going to have to maybe conserve a bit of gas here. Did that happen? No, so uh, when he went zombie mode, <laughs> he was bleeding, he just kept coming forward. Um, I was uh, I was just kind of stay composed, you know, because that's kind of how I try to be in the gym. I like pressuring people like that, you know. Yeah. And I felt the pressure came being put on me. So I was just trying to stay composed. And in the second round, I didn't take my foot off the gas. I mean, I did, but I didn't intentionally do that. Like, I I honestly was a little tired of the first round. I think yeah. I had on four weeks' notice. And um, I was going for the, the finish in the first round a few times. Like, I landed a flying knee or, or a few head kicks as well. I went for the finish after, tried to land some, some finishing shots after, you know, to follow up. And he survived it, you know. So I was a little tired from um, trying to push the finish in the first. So in the second round, when he got me down, um, he's got a good geek and good rear naked choke. So I didn't want to make any mistakes and give up my back trying to get up or or uh, give him the guillotine, following my underhook, trying to stand up, you know. So I was kind of playing it safe. And, yeah. and, I, and I just knew, in my mind, I just knew that if I was going to give up that. I had to win the third round no matter what. Yeah. You know, that's what, that, uh, that's what I was going to say. You know, a lot of people are super close. And how comfortable were you when the final buzzer sounded that you had done enough? I feel like I got enough. I knew it was close, but... Yeah. Um, I think it would be him winning in that third round. If anything, it would be a uh, cage position. I guess like he was more coming forward, you know, pushing the action. Yeah. But I was still landing more shots, more jabs, more uh, just more shots. Even when he put me against the cage for the last few minutes in the in the third, I was on the cage for like two minutes, and I remember um, I landed some cleaner shots there as well. So I felt like I did do enough. Um, you know, what were your what were your thoughts when they announced you as the winner of the contract? Because you had like two different things you had to kind of go through. Right, it's like first you have to win the fight, 
then you have to get the contract. You had to be one of the best fights of the night, right? So you have these like all these different variables to, that you have to get through. So what did you think when you got the contract? Was there a relief? Was it excitement? What were you feeling? Yeah, man. Honestly, the first thought was uh, it kind of took me off guard, to be honest. Like, if there's a video I'm in it on YouTube of, of the UFC posted of it, and if you pause it when they announced it, you could see the shock in my face. Like, <laughs> what? Because two first round matches, you know, so yeah. I didn't know the split just did it, even though we went to war. Um, so, yeah, it was a little bit of shock, but then instantly just happy, man, like a uh, surreal feeling of happiness. And just, <laughs> it was awesome just thinking about it right now, kind of. Yeah, de- my face, you know? definitely, man, definitely. How important was it for you to get a fight like that? And, like, that was easily fight of the night and potentially fight of the entire eight weeks. Um, what did like? What was it like to get a fight like that under your belt with a guy like Peterson, like a guy that brings a war like that? Was it, How important was that? I mean, it, it was good. I would rather not have that, though, because sure. I was planning on going in there and knock out, you know? Yeah. So... Um, it's definitely important. Definitely put some uh, experience under my belt, you know. And uh, I had to dig deep and think smart in there and make make the right moves, even when I was like dead tired, you know. So it, it was good having under my belt. So I'm gonna do my best to not have another one of those. Get to go back to my finishing <laughs> ways. Right. Yeah. You you definitely don't want to have too many of those. But but like you said, you know, it's good to get good to get the occasional one under your belt and just gain that experience for when you end up in that situation. Um, and you are now entered, and you are officially part of the UFC Bantamweight roster. Um, how does that feel? Being a part of the Bantamweight yeah, roster? Like, yeah, like just when, you, when, you, when you've realized now, like like we're past you getting your name called and stuff, right? Like you, you're officially like weeks. It's been weeks. Like you are a UFC Bantamweight now. What do you think of that and like and just the division as a whole? Well, dude, to be honest, you just saying that just with a smile on my face. <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> Sweet. cool. Sweet, good. Um, yeah, no, it feels amazing, bro. It's like a dream come true. I can't even lie. Like within the last week or two since the fight, I've um, over the last few weeks, I've, I've went on UFC.com, dot com, looked at my profile, and seen it all on the official profile. Now. I like it. I don't <laughs> I've done that a few times. And, yeah, so I mean, I'm definitely embracing it. Um, like I'm 23 right now, and yeah. I've been training since I was 12 years old for this. So it's been 11 years in the baking, bro. So it's like it's awesome. Like, just the other day, I forgot, something happened where I had to put down, like, my job or something. I can't remember exactly what it was for, but I was, normally I'm like, oh, I'm a professional MMA fighter. But now I was like, wait, no, I'm actually, I'm a professional UFC fighter. Like, I can say that now. Yeah, that's But, good. you know, normally you can't. So it was kind of cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. They're the cool things. It's a huge accomplishment. You should be extraordinarily proud of yourself. Um it's a it's a it's a very exciting division to be stepping into. There's lots of great potential matchups. Is there anybody you'd like to make your debut against? Um, I don't care honestly too much. I mean, I don't care if there's one person in the UFC that I would like to fight just because we had some beef in the region. It'd probably be Albert Morales, but I'm not really one to call people out. But if there's anyone I I would, it would probably be him. You know, just so we could settle our, our beef we had in the region. I told we were supposed to fight next and pulled out he kind of opened his mouth a little bit you know well i didn't even i didn't get injured i got well yeah i guess i did concussion and he was like saying i was taking it or something to touch him so probably just other than that i don't care i'm honestly excited for any name to put in front of me just because it's gonna be a a ufc name you know so i'm excited and excited to step up to the plate yeah i mean there was another another bantamweight was signed to sean o'malley in week two um, would that be like a fight that would interest you, like the battle of like the the Dana White contender series bantamweight type? You know, would would you get into something like that? Yeah, I mean, I I don't care at all, bro. Like the only <laughs> like I said, the only person there fight is Albert, but whoever they put in front of me, I don't care. I'm gonna be going in there trying to put him away. Nice. You just you're, uh, you're, I, I was just to, you you're. I just wanted, wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So you're just a, kind of like a send me the contract and I'll sign it kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. Unless I have beef with them, you know, there's yeah. only like two people I really got beef with in, in this sport. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, whoever signs the contract by me, it's, I'm ready to go. Nice, man. Hey, I'd like to see you get in there with Albert. I always like when there's like a personal element to it. It always brings, I don't know, like a sense of, uh, I don't know, it just gives it something, man. It gives it an edge, you know, when it when it's, there's something involved, like a personal a beef or something. It always gives it a little extra. Yeah, no, I'm, 
I'm sure in time <laughs> there might be a few of those, but right now, no, just over and over, I'd say, um, not even, I don't really even like saying his name or like calling him out like that, you know, but it's just, he said some things, you know, and I, uh, I just, I'm not going to forget about him, you know, so if we have the opportunity to cross paths, I would, I'd be happy to do it, you know, I'm confident in the matchup. Nice, nice, man. Um, how soon are you looking to make your, your debut? And have you had any discussion of that yet? Yeah, bro, I've already been training in the gym. I want to make it as soon as possible, you know, but um, I think a lot of the cars are full until, like, December. Yeah. So um, I want to make it as soon as possible, but whenever they give me the call, you know, I'll be ready. What's your timeline? I mean, obviously you're coming in this to win a title. That's the goal. Um, what what kind of timeline do you give yourself to do that? Um, that's that's kind of a, a tough question, just because I think I know of the champ, you know. So as long as he's champ, I'm not going to fight for the belt. I can get him. I'll just try to play the division outside of him. But um, you know, if he wasn't the champion, I think I can get up there with him. Depending on if I put people away, you know, if I get a bunch of first round finishes or, or knock everyone out that's in front of me, I could say. Within two years, I could see myself being a top contender and getting a title shot, you know. Definitely. You know, speaking of the teammates that you train with, um, you've had a pleasure. You've had the pleasure to watch some of the best 35ers in the world train, fight, win world titles. Is there anybody from from Team Alpha Male that you look up to more than the rest, and why? Um, man, I honestly, I look up to all of them. Like uh, all my teammates in the UFC, um, it's obviously especially the guys in the UFC a little more because they've made it to the top level. Right, but. Uh, Honestly, just my team as a whole, man. Like they inspire me. I was always a guy where, um, when I outside of fights, I'd, I'd like blow up, get heavy, um, get super out of shape, not be back in the gym for months, you know, until I scheduled another fight. Yeah. And um, they see them every day. They all train all year round. Like they'll all they'll fight, and then they'll be in the gym that the next week training. So, like Cynthia, Alex Sandoval, like all of them, dude. Like literally all of them. But I mean, there's people like really changed me because those two are the ones who like got on me and were like hey he you say he's more serious and I just talented but he was just over here you know yeah. wasting your time and I can put everything into it you know what speaking so TJ TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt are getting ready to fight what's it like to watch that fight for you I'm assuming you've had some training time with both of them oh well I only trained with TJ for like a month or two oh, okay okay when I first came out oh like a few years ago. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, I don't know too much about, about, like, that, but, um, Cody's my boy, you know, and that's honestly, uh, probably the guy, if I wouldn't say that I'd look up to him probably the most, just because he's slayed his entire division, he knocked everyone out, and got to the top quick, you know, and then beat a legend and made it look easy. He did. I definitely know him, one of them, too, and, um, uh, I got, obviously, I got Cody winning that fight, and I think he's, I think he's gonna knock him out, I think he's gonna him. Yeah, man. For you know, sure. I, I feel like I, I feel like he's gonna dominate him. That's my personal opinion. But I mean, I'm no expert. I mean, I'm yeah, not an expert. You know, <laughs> so it's just kind of a feeling I get. I just Cody looks. I don't know. He, he, what he did to Cruz was uh, unbelievable. Really, for me anyway. Yeah. It was such a crazy performance. No, it, it, and the thing about Cody too is like he's the kind of guy where if you blink at the wrong time, then you he. He throws a faint and you blink. <laughs> he can throw a three-piece combination <laughs> down the pipe, you know. By the time you open your eyes, the third one's hitting you on the chin. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, yeah, you got to be careful even to blink when they're going against them, you know. Oh, that's good. That's got to be a comforting feeling. <laughs> if you're going in there, that yeah. you can't blink. Nice. <laughs> he is quick, man. Yeah, man, I believe it. He, he's, you know, like I said, like I've never seen anyone out like outspeed Dominic Cruz and he did it and almost effortlessly it looked like which was just insane to me so yeah it was a, that was a great athlete man great great fighter um so what happens with you then man if, if you know you go on a run right now and you, you know that you get f four or five fights over the next you know year let's a year and a half let's say and they want you to fight you know they they're saying you got a title shot what do you do do you vacate the division like what what goes on then is that a conversation you have to have then how do you work it 
What do you mean? Like, well, well, well I, Cody, I'm saying Cody's the champ, and you're saying he's your boy. So you you kind of enter the division, and like I'm saying, if you run off four or five fights in the next, you know, 16 to 18 months, and you you start getting into like, oh, I'm in a title shot co- or, or conversation or something in the next two years, and Cody's still the champ, what happens there? Well, then I would probably just like I said before, I would probably just try to play the division outside of that, or yeah. if I'm a big enough. Try to get for more money fights, you know. I've always I wanted to be a champion since I was a little kid. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm a few years younger than Cody, so I don't know. When he's champion, I'm I'm not gonna face him. He's like a big brother to me, you know. So right. I don't care for that. But um, but if he's not champion, obviously, fight like, and it's possible for the draw if that was the case. Yeah. But I think he is gonna be champion for a long time. Cause he, he's a bad dude. So, um, <laughs> you always giggle when you say that, man. It's like you know something nobody else knows. You're like, he's a bad dude. And there's this little like giggle to your voice. It's like I feel like you've seen yeah, him in the gym. Sure. <laughs> like, a lot of people didn't know who he is, you know. And he's a, I think he's been a champion for a long time, which yeah. I don't mind. He's like a big brother to me, and a lot of the opportunities I have in this sport uh, at this level have been because of him. You know, you guys like your guys, but no, he's the man. Um, but I don't know. Maybe move up. Maybe move down. I don't know. Nice, man. I'll probably definitely be looking fights if that's the case. And I'm try to, I always try to be uh, one of the most exciting fighters on the cards. So yeah, man. Listen, hopefully, I, it'll be a draw. I really look forward to seeing your debut, man. I think you've got a bright, bright future. Uh, and I want to thank you for your time, man. I really appreciate you giving us some of it. Uh, I know it's valuable. So thank you very much. And I uh, wish you all the best, brother. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, 100%, man. Maybe we yeah, can have, ho- Hopefully, we can have you back when you're getting ready to fight. Yeah, sounds good. Just hit me up. All right, sweet, man. Enjoy the rest of the night, brother. Have a great one. Thank you, bro. You too. All right, later. Later. Sean Shelby's got it easy. I think Albert Moraz is probably a good uh, good good matchup. Yeah, he's coming off a loss. Yeah, it's a good fight for a guy just coming in. What's his record? I know it's 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 decent. Seven and uh, seven, two and one. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, there you go. That's a really good fight, actually. Yeah. 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 You know what I think? I think. Um, he's the. M- I don't want to say he's the most prepared. I don't want to say that because that's not really a true statement. I don't know if yeah. he is or not. But going through the fight he went through with Peterson, like yeah. it solidifies with me that you're you're where you're supposed to be. Like you're good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, like beat. like I said, like you know, I've watched the fight a couple times. Like I could see I see two one for Peterson, but I I'm not angry. You know what I mean at the decision. Like yeah. it could. Have gone either way. I'm not and saying when, I'm when right. When Peterson just continues to walk forward, you know what I mean. It can change. It's, it's like if you're hitting him, but he's backing you down, and he controls the center of the octagon. Yeah. It's a weird thing with the judges; they get confused. Yeah, listen, it's so close that like I like I said, like someone someone says, "Oh, Benito Lopez won." I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I can see that. One I, thing I, for sure, they're not handing out draws at the Dana White Contender n- Series. No, 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 no. <laughs> and and like I said, like I could see it, right? Like. I could see someone saying he won. It's not like it was like one side. It's like no, yeah. it was robbery. Like not even close. Like, it was it was like razor close. It just depends what side you. Yeah, you they know, do, they've done maybe, a great. They, maybe I got a little, you know, uh, yeah. fan dazzled with the 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 forward walk. You know, the, the zombie yeah, yeah, approach. Exactly. Right? But, but great they, fight they get, all together. That show has been so successful so far. They've they've been a great job bringing in the right guys. Yeah, you definitely, know what I mean? definitely, definitely. Um, speaking of bringing in the right guys, um, next up is Zhu and Yan and Yan and mm-hmm. Yan Wu. Um, really looking forward to him. He's going to be in Pittsburgh uh, fighting, so we're going to talk uh, I- I- his debut, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, we'll be right back. Zulu. Zulu. Yan Wu. Zulu. Zulu. Talk to you soon. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Zhu and Yan Wu, who's getting ready to take on Justin Ledet this Saturday at UFC Fight Night 116. What's going on, Zhu? Welcome to the show, brother. Welcome back. Thanks for coming. What's up, man? Yes. I'm here, you know? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. How's everything been, man? Been a roller coaster recently. Um, everything been everything been good, man. Um, you know, got got a call, yeah. six, you know, 6 days notice on Saturday. Hey, you want to you want to take this fight next week and I'm like, uh, I guess I have to. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair Can't enough. Say no. <laughs> what uh, what's uh, what what what, uh, what kind of shape are you in? Were you really active after the fight with Rebello? Um, I know heavyweight man. There's um, not, you know, you don't have to necessarily hit a weight, right? So he could get gets to eating. You know, I, I I'm not in the shape I want to be in. Yeah. You know, but uh, 
you know, but you, you can't say no to opportunity. When the opportunity comes, you got to kick the, you know, kick the bitch down. Yeah, yeah. You know? Fair enough. So, uh, but I like a full fight cam, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Fair enough. Um, you know, things that put in motion when you knocked out Greg Rebello. what did you think of your performance against Rebello as a whole? I think my performance against Rebello was a, it was, it was a, a sharp performance, you know what I mean? It was, uh, you know, it was, it was good. I think I did enough to get the contract that night. Hold on once. Oh, there you are. There you are. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. We were having a little uh, visual issue. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I thought I did. I thought I did enough to get the contract that night. I think my performance was probably on the scale from one to ten, about an eight. Yeah, you know, it was definitely a good performance, man. That right hand was crazy over top of the left. It was like one of those instant yeah. like fights over, man. I, I thought it was a, a very calculated fight, man. I feel like you went in and stuck to your game plan. It, was that part of the plan, just go in there and stick to what you had? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't rush. I'm, I'm, very, uh, I'm a very calculated person. I don't go out there and, you know, people know oh, he's a brawler. Sorry, are you with us? I'm We're having your, your audio is breaking up on me there. I, I, once I get your... Are you there? Oh, breaking up. Hold Sorry, man. Second. You got me? Yeah, I got you, bro. Um, yeah, so so yeah, okay. keep going. Sorry, I apologize. Um, you were saying that you uh, you felt on a, on a on a total it was about an eight, and then you and then I kind of cut out from me and started getting all fuzzy on me there. Yeah, so I uh, said my performance was like about an eight. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know it was calculated performance. It was sharp. Uh, I didn't rush anything, you know, because he's a he's a deadly striker himself. Sure, very but, powerful. But you know, it's like once I get your timing down, you're done, basically. You know. You know, you you were able to knock him on the second round when you scored the TKO. How did you feel about your possibility of getting the UFC shot? Did you feel like it was in the bag when the minute the fight ended? Uh, I didn't feel like it was in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Because I just know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I've been promised things before. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to be honest, with you, I didn't feel like it was in the bag. It wasn't a surprise to me they didn't pick me. It's just I knew. I don't know. You know how those guys are, you know. Uh, I didn't know it was. I didn't think it was in the bag. You know, I was when they when I picked when they said pick they they were gonna pick two people. Then I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's me. You know, mm -hmm. but I can't hate on the other guys that got picked. They're they're good. They were good too. For sure, for you know? sure. Um, what what were your thoughts when he when you when you were passed on? Like, what were your you know the moments after you you know you're not one of the guys picked? What are your thoughts going through your head? You've had this performance. It's an incredible performance. <laughs> one of my what are, what are my thoughts? <laughs> I can't even say it all here. <laughs> Fair oh. enough. Anger, I imagine. Um, man, there was, you know, there was a, there was there's a lot of things, man. I was going through my mind. It was a it was a quiet shuttle ride home to the hotel. Yeah. Say it like that. It was, it was like we won, but we didn't win. So uh, yeah, I can hear. It. it was cool. the team. The team that was with me was was real quiet, you know. Yeah. So um, it was like I got messages, a lot of inbox emails, like, like hey, you 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 could guess as good as mine, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going on. I didn't watch the contender sit after we me, and damn, like seeing the people are getting picked, and they. Picked the heavyweight for the last week, and I was like, "Damn, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, all of a sudden the heavyweight stuff." Well, I don't think he had a better performance than me. I mean, I mean, can't hey, he got picked. He was good, you know, but it was just one of them things. Like, damn, you know, like, and that's why I was really like, "Shit, I'm not getting picked up." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I was about to say, like, did you have that moment where you're kind of sitting there and you're like, "Okay, I just had this great performance." It, it, it doesn't get much better, you know. And I got passed on, like, like yeah. I, it's done for me. Like, yeah. I beat somebody. I, yeah, I beat. You know, I I, I knocked out a dude with thirty fights. I'm like, what else I got to do? You know, that as times like that was twice in front of Dana. You know, so I'm like, damn, what else I got to do? Like, you know. Yeah. Snoop Dogg came up to me and was like, "What do you got to do?" I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, and I so, noticed on social media your frustration because I follow you on all social media, man, and um, 
I seen your frustration. You were watching that uh, Alan, Alan Crowder fight. Um, I think that's who you were referring to a minute ago when you said he got picked up <laughs> in the last week. And, <laughs> yeah. and you were you were cheesed, man. <laughs> you were you were cheesed. You know, you're like, are you kidding me? Yo, you yo. know, and, I had and, the bottle out. Yeah, I had the bottle out. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, good. He won, but it wasn't the best performance. It wasn't even one of the best fights of the night. Right. What did it feel like for you, you know to what I'm not just win, but you hear Dana in the ring, in, or sorry, in the octagon after, and he's saying like, "We need heavyweights. Like we're gonna give him a well, shot." <laughs> like, I, I just, I, I didn't know what to say. I mean, I felt like, you know, everyone hit me up when he said that. Yeah. yeah the bottle. Yeah, the yeah. bottle was. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> man, I was, I was sitting. I'm, I was, I was, I, I was. I swear to God, I was on Facebook, and I was watching because you were, you were actually. I, w I wasn't able to be at home to watch it on Fight Pass, so you were showing the fight. You had the fight going like the, the live stream, right? Yeah. So I was watching it right the through Rocky. your stream. You know what I mean? And then you, I was just reading the comments. I was like, man, this poor guy, but he's gonna be cheesed right now. And then they give the guy the fight. I was, I was like, oh my god, I can only imagine what Zeus thinking hey, right now. Like you had and, a pretty clean performance. Yeah. And Exactly, and Dana picked three people that night. I know. <laughs> so bad. So I'm thinking man. like, oh. so I'm thinking like, damn, I should have been on the last episode or something. Right. So, so you know, you go from that. Now you're talking like, you know, you got the bottle out. Like things are not. They've been better, right? <laughs> <laughs> they've been better. But yeah, now, man. You know, then you get the call though. The call comes. What are you thinking when you get the call and they're like, okay, like we want you, man. Um. I have to say, he was like, you know, basically, you know, I get the call and um, I get the call from, uh, what's it called, Haydack. And then, and then, you know, Haydack, you know, conspires with my manager, you know, basically. Yeah. And I don't know if the stuff's getting done, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't, until it's 100 percent on paper, I really don't go into things anymore until I see the contract. Yeah, yeah. And it's sitting back with an email from UFC, congratulations, you're in a UFC. Fair enough. So, you know, when, when you know, my man Haydak, he's a CFC president. Yeah. Okay. So he so you got to touch contact with my manager and uh, they got it done. And, and here we are today, you know. So, okay. So I'm like, okay, it's it, it's going down. So then I tell my coach this. And they're like, what? Like, they couldn't, my team couldn't believe it. They're like, I said, I still don't believe it. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm up here, I'm not even really. I'm like, okay, it's, you know, it's about time kind of thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit me. It's going to hit me, but I don't know when it's going to hit me. Fair enough, man. Um, you know, you're, you're going in there. You drew, you drew a fairly tough opponent, Justin Ledet, undefeated, 8-0. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you know about him in this short time, and how do you feel like you match up in what you've seen? Um, Justin Ledet. You know, I, I was on him before. He's okay. he's solid. Like I told like people when they mentioned the name at first, and I was like, that's a that's a tough that's a tough fight for a one week camp. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I said that's a that's a that's a solid fight. Yeah. I keep it real. Um, he's he's good. You know what I mean? Um, you know he's he's solid, but I can I can bang with the best of them. You know, you know I, I spar with pro boxers all the time in camps. You know, are you know six foot three. Are six foot three? Yeah. Sorry, you broke up on me there. You spar with boxers who are six foot three. Yeah, six foot four, six foot three. Yeah. And uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. So, um, okay. So, um, yeah. First thing I saw, thought about him was like, oh, that's my dad. First thing I thought was, uh, you know, Jad. He's a real nice Jad. You know. So, um, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good matchup, man. Like, I got a lot of heart, though. You know, so it's a good, it's a good matchup. It's a good. It's a good matchup. Where do you Where do you feel like your advantages are in the fight? My advantages, my advantages. I just I got a lot of experience. I got eighteen fights. Right. So yeah. So as I was saying, how do you see yourself winning this fight? Uh, I don't know. Can this fight can end in you know uh, in a knockout submission? It's probably going to end. It's going to end. It's going. This fight's going to end on next week. Definitely. Um, do you looking for the knockout? I, I assume like what, you, because you go out and you have that feel out process, like the first round. Um, do you think that's going to benefit you with the short camp? The fact that you don't have like a like a, like you don't necessarily go out there and just go right for the gusto, but you kind of have that that very calculated feel out process, cardio wise. Do you think that'll benefit you? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm a, I'm a patient guy. I mean, 
the fight when I fight it just it just comes to me. I don't know what it is. It just comes to me. You know the the game it comes so natural to me. Just like I seen everything but Jesus. So I'm not you know he's a he's a stud. Don't get me wrong, he's a stud. But um, um, I'm not I'm not worried. I would like a full camp. Go get everything you want. Like just say, you know, this ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. It is not Burger King. Um, you know. You're going to get in there, man. You're 35, 35, correct? Uh, 36. About 36. 36. Oh. I just turned 36. I just turned. Oh, okay, okay. Well, happy belated. <laughs> um, you know, you're you're no spring chicken in the sport. Like you said, you've seen everything, man. You've been around. No. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Viking. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming you're you're coming in with that the attitude of, like, time is of the essence. You know, you, you get on top of stuff. Um do you got an idea of who you want to fight next? Are you going to get in there and have a name ready? Like, how are you going to navigate yourself now that you've made it here? Mm, I mean, I got to, you know, I can't even worry about who I'm going to fight next, even though I know who I want to fight next. Right. But I can't say it right now. Okay. <laughs> I got to get through with Ledet. Yeah, yeah. He's solid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? He's, so, he's, 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 tough, he's too yeah. solid to be like, I'm, I'm no one to fight next. You know, mm-hmm. I'm coming here with a one we can't. Fair enough, then, fair Let enough. me get through him, then, then we can talk about it. <laughs> fair, fair, man. Um, how, what's, it, what's it like for you now to be there, like going through this process? Everything happens so quickly that I, I, are you, is it able to even soak in? Like, are you able to take it in yet that this is where, like, you're in Pittsburgh, you're at UFC, you're fighting Saturday. Like, what, what's this process for you, man? I don't know. It's like, you know, um, I'm here, I'm chilling with my uh, coach Johnson. We're just here, we're going through the motions like it's, uh, like it's a regular, like it's a regular fight camp, just a short notice one, yeah. you know what I mean? Like like we're in a camp, but we're just in a, in a short enough time fight camp. And uh, we're just going through the, you know, we're recovering and, and training, you know, two times a day at, at the hotel. So while people are probably just right now taking a light recovering, we're trying to open up the lungs right now. You know what I mean? Fair, yeah. And uh, and um, you know, and you've seen all the other. It's like, damn, this is where I should. This is where I should have been, years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a long. You know, road just like, sure. damn, this is where I should have been. The staff was happy for me. Like they got a memory from Contender Series. They're like, you know, we knew you were gonna be back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was all good. It was all good to see them kind of too. You know, and you see like the major fighters walking around, like the Hector Lombards, the. The David Branches, the Luke Rockholds, you know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, you know? It's, 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 good, it's a good feeling, man. But you're that guy, too, man. Like, you know what I mean? They, like, you start talking yeah, to David like, Branch, like, those guys just made it, too, like David Branch specifically. But you're that guy, too, now, man. Like, you're a UFC fighter, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, embrace that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's funny. It's like, that's so what my coaches Johnson says, like, you're that guy. He's like, you're that guy too now. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's like, <laughs> Listen, man, uh, mm-hmm. I wish you all the luck in the world against Justin Ledet. I want to thank you for giving us some of your time and coming back on the show to speak with us. Um, I'll be rooting for you, man, and uh, best of luck in the cage, brother. No doubt. Let me um, shout out my team. Uh, yeah, yeah, NPR, give anything you got. And, uh, Langhorn. Let me shout out my team, NPR. Uh, my people's uh, Ben Salem, Bucks County. Um uh, Nigeria, of course. Uh, my sponsors, uh, Scruples, always holding me down. And uh, everybody else is supported. Tune in, FS1. We're on the main card. First fight yes. in the UFC. Yes. It's going to be a banger. <laughs> that a boy, man. You know what? I look forward to it, man. And like I said, best of luck and thank you. Hopefully we can talk again after the fight. No doubt. Be on again. Cool. Thanks, brother. Talk to you Peace. soon. I was just thinking, like, <clears throat> about Dana and him not selecting him. It's just, do you think Dana is smart? And not just Dana, but do you think they're thinking, you know, the heavyweight division is so thin that we not, we're not going to give a selection to a heavyweight because we know we can just call this guy up whenever we need it. You know what I mean? Whereas in, like, the other divisions, you know, you kind of need to bring these guys along. Whereas in the heavyweight, I mean, the, well, the fight ends yeah, pretty I, quickly usually. I think you need, especially in the heavyweight division, because it's so thin, and you need to have guys that you can yeah. call on, you know? And I think that he just – I think what happened is he didn't get picked, but he ended up at the top of a very short list. Exactly, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like if I was an evil businessman, <laughs> which yeah. I'm not, but if I was an evil businessman, yeah. I'd be like, no, there's no point. Like I could call Zulu – you know, I could call Zulu t- tomorrow, 
yeah. and he's dying to be down. Just like he said, you yeah. know, you know, I hate to be that guy, but I feel like that's probably what happened. Of course that's what happened. Yeah. You know, it's true. It's, that's the, how it is. I think that they, you know, if it's like, if I sign you, I can't f- push you into this like week notice fight. Yeah. You know, I got to give you like some sort of a camp, six weeks, whatever, you know, four weeks, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, I'll put you on this other list and it's like, when we need you, we call you, you know, and be ready. Yeah. He's just fortunate. He's a heavyweight, right? So, you know, he's not a. He's not forced to try to do crazy dieting or anything in like this week or doing anything yeah, nuts, you know. Exactly. Um, a la Chris Weidman, thirty-two pounds in like two days for Damian Maya. Yeah, no. Sometimes I wonder like how, how much that affects him, but yeah, for sure. I, I can't. I'm excited for this card. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a great card. Yeah. I really look forward to this fight, man. I love. I, you know the. It's always when you see heavyweights and you know that they bang. You're like, yes. Yeah. Yes, I have to have the two screens. You have to watch the Canelo Triple G fight and then the, the UFC right. fight at the same time. Oh, it's kind okay. of a mistake, probably, but whatever. Canelo, Canelo Triple G. Put them G. on at the same time. Oh, that's such a good fight. Yeah, I'm not really trying to cross over into boxing right now, but but man, that's a good fight. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're gonna have a hard time. There's gonna be a lot of people watching that over. It's good. I mean, David Branch Rockhold is like an amazing fight. Branch has a like has a handful, but he's also he's they he's know amazing. that. Yeah. They know G- that. When GSP predicts somebody to win, he says it. Went, he said David Branch is gonna win the fight. When he says that. You know, it's like I don't know. I've never seen GSP. He's always right. He's like a fortune teller. So uh, very I don't. I don't see how he's gonna. Maybe he'd have to grind it out. Maybe, but I, I, Rockhold's just so damn good. Yeah, Rockhold is good. You know, it. it he kind of he, he has to keep Rockhold moving backwards. Yeah, he can't allow Rockhold to stalk him and get into that position where he's throwing those like really hard left body yeah, kicks. Like he has to keep that him Muay Thai move, style. Yeah, he's got to keep him like moving backwards. He can't take yeah. those kicks. Like, mm-hmm. and that's when Rockhold's lethal. Where he starts walking forward and. You know, and Branch is really good on the ground too. So I don't know, but Luke trains with killers. It's tough, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's a great fight. It's just good overshadowed fight. by the the boxing we'll match, see. unfortunately. Yeah, it is unfortunate, but good card. You know, like I said, it'll, it'll be on the. If I'm telling the truth, like it, it might be on the smaller of the two TV, but it'll <laughs> be on a TV. That's the point. That's we'll the main both, thing, sure. right? Yeah. Um, listen, we're gonna be back. We got Derek Krantz, um, LFA welterweight champion, and uh, he's got a big fight coming up against James Nakashima. Looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to talk to him. We're going to see what's going on, uh, see what his preparations have been like and where his head's at. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. Derek Krantz. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with LFA welterweight champion Derek Krantz. Uh, he's getting ready to take on James Nakashima coming up at LFA 23. What's going on? Welcome to the show, Derek. Thanks for coming back, brother. Hello? Yes. Hey, what's going on, Derek? Thanks for coming back to the show, man. Welcome. No problem, man. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, 100%. We love having you on the show. How's everything been, man? How's training for this fight with Nakashima? How's everything been going? Man, everything's on point. Uh, my weight's good. My training's looking great. My cardio's there. Um, you know, honestly, uh, I wish the fight was this Friday because I'm ready <laughs> to get this, you know, this done and over with. Uh, you know, you train for two months for a fight and – once you get to that point where, you know, you're ready and your weight's there, you just want to go ahead and get it done, and that's where I'm at. Absolutely. And I know I know you're not a fan of the weight cut, man. We talked about that before. You're, you're a big fan of pizza and Whataburger. Um, I am. <laughs> you, you had said to us before that sometimes, like, that's the hard part is the weight cut and, and things like that. How's everything been that far? Uh, so far uh, sorry, as far as that goes, how's everything been? Man, honestly, uh, I... I want I want to say this weight cut for this fight so far has been easier than my last two. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm training for five five minute rounds or what, but uh, you know my weight's looking really good right now, so I'm I'm happy. Does it kind of make you know training for the five rounds? Is that something you've always done? Do you change normally for like a five round fight or like more rounds, or or do you kind of just taper it to to what you need? Yeah, you know I, I try not to overtrain. Um, uh, uh, you know, you got overachievers, which, you know, sadly I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my coaches have to get on my ass cause sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do the bare minimum. Right. Uh, but you know, I know, I know Nakashima is a game opponent and I know he's going to push me and, uh, he's got a, a habit of going to decision. So I, I, I made sure to make it a point to be ready for five rounds. Yeah, uh, um, you know, in in uh, you, you are getting, uh, with James Nakashima, you got a tough opponent ahead of you, um, good, strong, durable guy. Um, are you? How do you feel like you match up with against him, and, and how much do you know about him? Do you do a lot of research? 
Um, you know, I, I, I might have an inch or two on reach on him. Uh, you know, the guy's a great wrestler. Um, you know, his stand-up's looking sharp as well. He, he comes forward real well. Real well. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he's a he's a game fighter. I've watched him. He, he he's not afraid to go in there and trade for punches and and look for takedowns, and whatnot. So. Uh, I know he's going to push the fight, so I had to make sure that I was ready for that kind of pace. And uh, you know, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight my fight. Um, you know, speaking of which, like you definitely did that in your last outing against Ben Newman. Is this a different sort of case? Because with a guy, when you were fighting Ben, you know, he he made it very clear he's not trying to exchange with you. Really, he does not really interested in throwing punches. He just kind of wants to try to get it to the ground. With Nakashima, there's going to be a bit more engagement. Does that change things for you a little bit when you go in there? You know, honestly, I'm I'm not sure. You know what Nakashima's game plan is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, the the guy's a great wrestler, um, but I have you know a lot of finishes on the ground. So sure. you know, he might be he might be looking to try to stand and bang or or trying to tire me out. You know, the guy uh, he, he comes from a smart camp. You know, with with good coaches. Yeah. So I'm sure they got some really cool game plan to try to take my belt for me but uh i plan on going out there and shutting that shit shutting that down sorry about that yeah no, no that's okay um where where do you feel like you're gonna enjoy the biggest advantage when you two step in the cage where do you feel like that comes for you uh, i'm sorry you're gonna have to repeat that yeah no problem i said um where do you feel like you're gonna enjoy the biggest advantage in the cage like where do you wh- what tools do you think are gonna give you the best opportunity to win um you know i think uh I think uh, my stand-up, uh, you know, his yeah. is really forward. Um, so is mine. I think we're going to clash. And uh, I don't I don't believe he's been hit with my right hand before. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously he hasn't, but with somebody who can hit as hard as I can. Fair enough, yeah. And, uh, you know, usually when you hit somebody hard and hit him first, their game plan changes. Um, I also think uh, my jiu-jitsu is better than him, uh, better, better than his. And uh, you know, I got some... I got some really decent wrestling myself. I do, I do fairly well against wrestlers in the gym. So, so I'm confident if he tries to go out there and wrestle me, I, uh, I have an answer for it. You know, he's pretty a, he, much. I, I, I got to answer everything uh, he plans on showing me next Friday. True story. True story. That's it's going to be an important part of bringing the the, the belt back with you. Um, you're going to have a, an experience advantage in this fight. Um, how much of a role do you think that's going to play? Uh, the experience? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I said you're going to have a, an experience advantage in this fight. And how much of a role do you feel like that's going to play in the fight? You know, uh, it really just depends on the person. Um, I saw his last fight, he was a little emotional because he didn't get the finish. Yes, um, yes. So, uh, you know, if, if he fights on emotion in this fight, uh, you know, I, I believe experience will... will uh, definitely be in my favor but you know if, if he keeps a level level head and, and comes out there i think he trains with you know well enough uh fighters out there at his camp that you know it, it should make too much of a difference um what can, what do you what can what can we expect from you in the cage on, on fight night i mean we know what you bring to the cage but what what, what could fans tuning in expect to see from you well i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna do what i always do i'm i'm, I'm gonna look for the finish uh, I'm not going to force it. If it comes, uh, you know, look forward to me putting away uh, Nakashima early. Or is, that, or, or is your prediction like a, a first round knockout? I'm a betting uh, guy. I mean, I like these. Things. I would, I would, lo- I would love a first round knockout. <laughs> sure. If he gives it to me, I'll take it. Um, Amen. You know, uh, but then again, it might be a first round submission. It, it all depends. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't really like calling the fights because yeah. I like playing it, playing it by ear when I'm in the cage. True. Um, do you feel like sometimes when you, because you have such, you know, you have vicious stand up, it kind of gets uh, a lot of attention from uh, stylistically from your point. I'm of view. sorry, say that again. I said you, you, uh, you have very strong striking. I said, and it, and it gets a lot of attention when people are watching you fight, and I imagine when they're trying to game plan for you. I would think. Do you think your jujitsu slept on, like your ground game? Do you feel like people sleep on it just because of the way your your, your stand up is? Uh, are you comparing my ground and stand up? I'm sorry. You're yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm just what I'm saying is, um, your stand up. 
Your stand-up gets a lot of attention because it's vicious. You come in, you're throwing big shots, power shots. Do you think people sleep on your ground game because uh, of kind of prepping for your stand-up and trying to deal with that? Uh, you know, it, it, it's possible. Um, you know, I know, I believe when people look at me to, to fight, you know, they watch my, my, my videos, they, they know I have, you know, strong punches, uh, uh, and they know I have great submissions. You know, I, I got what i think 19 finishes out of 20 professional wins um so i'm i'm really good at recognizing the fight i think uh, or the finish i think that's one of my strong points and uh be it you know me cracking them with the right hand or taking them back and choking them out um you know I, i'm not greedy i'll take i'll take what you give me true have you had any uh contact with the ufc or their matchmakers or anything like where do you feel like you go after this no, um, you know, honestly, uh, hopefully, you know, after a good win here, you know, more more doors open. Uh, you know, I, I got a good management company, so uh, if if an opportunity presents itself, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that they'll get me in. Um, uh, right now, I just kind of focus on winning this next fight and right. uh, doing what I do best. Does it do you kind of feel like you're knocking on the door though when you look at like what's been going on in LFA? I mean, they took Roberto Sanchez, uh, Eric Anders has made it. There's been numerous champions kind of get the championship belt and maybe a fight or not, yeah. and then they end up going. Absolutely, you absolutely. You know, I, I feel I feel I've been knocking on that door for a couple of years now. I just uh, you know kind of choked when the time came, so uh, I, I plan on you know redeeming that and. Uh, uh, I mean, the welterweight division is stacked right now, so I, I got to show them, you know, that, that I got to make them believe they want me, you know, that they need me. Well, right now, you know, you're not, not so much as I deserve that, you know, deserve it. I, right. I need to make, I need to convince them that they have to have me there. Does that make you? Do you feel any pressure for that at all? Like to go out there and, and feel like you have to do that to get that, uh, to you know, get that attention? You know, when I was younger, you know. They did, but uh, I'm going on, you know, uh, what nine years of, as a professional. Yes. Uh, got close to thirty professional fights. Uh, I'm I'm pretty seasoned. Uh, I tr I'm I, I try not to let that kind of stuff get to me anymore. Um, like like I said earlier, uh, I'm I'm a a one fight kind of guy now. I, I set my mind on it, and I you know I don't let my mind wander anymore because I used to do that when I was young, and you know. You got to get your mind there. The mind's got to be at the fight. Um, you know, speaking of, of all that, you're like right now you're 29, and, and right you're so that's like right in the heart of the pri of your prime. Do you feel like a devastating victory, and, and like you're ready to take on the elite in the world? Like, are you feeling like you're you're at that in your stride like that? Oh, absolutely. I, I believe I I can I can beat anybody in the world right now in my weight class. There's no no doubt about it. Um, and I plan on proving it next Friday. And when, you know, um, speaking of, like, the elite welterweights, where do you feel like you fit in? When you look at the UFC's welterweight division, or even Bellator has a very stacked welterweight division, where do you feel like you fit in in those, in those divisions, like, when you look at them, the rosters? I fit at the very top, my friend. I like it. We're talking top five, top three. Where do you feel? Nah, yeah, top five, easily. Let, let, me, let me fight somebody who's top five, and I'll, I'll show you what's going on. I like it. You know, man, I'm I'm a, an advocate for that. I think that you belong, and I think that there's so many – would stylistically, there would be so many great fights for you in the top ten and definitely the top five that I'm an advocate for that, my friend. I would love to see you get that opportunity. I think you can make the most of that. Um, wow. The, the, uh, the last undefeated fighter you fought was Andre Koreshkov way back in 2012. Is there any extra motivation in taking somebody's O away? I, uh, I guess I, I've never really, you know, really paid attention. Everybody loses, you yeah. know. Nobody goes undefeated. Um, you know, I, I learned that when I went eight and as a professional, and uh, got lazy and overconfident and lost my first fight. I mean, it, it happens. You know, everybody's gonna have a bad day. You know, it, it, that's just the way of the uh, the fight game. Um, man, I'll tell you what. I plan on. Uh, I plan on giving Nakashima his first loss and first finish. I like it, man, and I hope you know to see I mean? that. Definitely, definitely. you got a lot to protect, too, man. He's protecting an O, but you're protecting that LFA belt. So you both have a, a lot on the line. 
So it's uh, it's going to make it a good one, I feel like. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, man. I'm, I'm ready for this fight. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. Uh, listen, I really want to thank you for giving us some of your time. Actually, you know what? I want to know, what are you eating after the fight, man? Because I know you like a pizza water burger thing. What do we do? Maybe both? Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll, man, right after the fight, man, that next morning, I'm usually eating IHOP. In the afternoon, water burger. I come home, I eat pizza up for dinner. Beautiful, it, beautiful. It, it, it's kind of like a ritual. I need to stop it because I, I keep getting overweight, but <laughs> gosh, it tastes so darn good. It does, doesn't it? I love it. I love all those things. i got to get to the States to try this Whataburger. We talked about that last time. I haven't had the opportunity yet, but everyone raves about it, so i got to make it down there and give that a shot. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's, my, it's my burger joint for sure. I came from uh, the West Coast, so... So I grew up on In and Out and Carl's Jr. and you know White Castle and all that. Yeah. And I thought it was all gravy until I came to Texas and had me a triple triple from Whataburger. <laughs> That's what I'm talking it blew about. Blew my mind. <laughs> awesome. Listen, Derek, man, I really want to thank you for giving us some of your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to your to your fight, and I wish you all the luck in defending your title, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Enjoy the rest of your night, sir. Thank you for the time. Bye. Right. All right, take care, man. You know those people that are just savages? Like, yeah. You know those people that you, like, you're like, man, he just hits so hard. You know, there's, like, somebody in this gym that just, just like, doesn't eat, like, anything bad. He's just, like, just furious, just in the corner, just angry, <laughs> you know. Like, this guy comes in with a water burger, you know. <laughs> it's natural athletes, man. And, like, a lot of people have to, they have to make up for that. Yeah, all, all the time. Well, you know what I noticed when I watched the fight, Newman. Mind you, like Newman is a huge contrast because the guy just doesn't throw punches. Really, it's mm-hmm. not his style. He doesn't do it that way. Um, not an overly powerful guy in that sense. So maybe he just looked like unbelievably powerful. Yeah. But I just remember like watching and striking, and it's like, wow. Like you don't want to get hit with that. Yeah. Like you don't want any part of that. You know. Yeah. Um, so you know, I really, I really would like to see him get a shot. I want to see what he could do. In the UFC, likely both these these champions will probably be in, under UFC the UFC banner. Yeah, pretty, likely. Pretty, within the, probably not the end of the year, but somewhere Maybe. somewhere in there. Yeah, I would say the end of the year is probably yeah. an intelligent. Probably somewhere around January. Yeah, yeah. January February for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I can't say. I mean, like if he wins this fight, he'll be a, that's a nice title defense under his belt. Seven and zero guy. Yeah. You know, a grinder, really tough guy, really durable guy. Um, I can't see the UFC passing up on him, you know. So they need to keep those the fresh blood flowing. And Andrea Lee's that de- definitely one hundred percent. Yeah, headed towards the UFC's flyweight yeah. division. Without should be, a doubt. Yeah, should be the, the, the diamond. And speaking of her, we have her up next. LFA's flyweight champion Andrea KGB Lee. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. Should be a good conversation. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with LFA flyweight champion Andrea Lee, who's getting ready to defend her belt against Jamie Thornton at LFA 23 on September 23rd. What's going on, Andrea? How are you? How's everything? I'm great. Fan. Everything's good. How's training been? For How's prep? Training's been really good. It's been, uh, you know, we've been grinding every day, and I'm just excited, you know. We're getting down to the last couple of days, and the fun part is uh, nearly here. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're a super active fighter, so you must be itching to get back in there because I know your last fight was canceled, so you kind of got put back a little bit. So uh, are you are you itching? Yeah. You got the itch to get back in there now? Oh, yeah. I, w- I mean, I had the itch then. I was upset that my fight fell through. I mean, I was the main event in Dallas, yes. and I was very sad. <laughs> I yeah. missed out on... <laughs> A bit of money, so. Yes, I imagine that you did. Could you get to, can I get you to pull the, I can't only see half your face. I'm seeing, there you are. There she is. <laughs> Everyone sees the cat. <laughs> oh, perfect, Sorry. perfect. No, no worries at all. Thank you very much. Um, are you got an upcoming fight now? You got Jamie Thornton. She's She's been put up there. I know you had a fight canceled on. You were supposed to have somebody else. Um, but Jamie took the fight, so that's good. Um, what do you know about her, and how do you feel about the, the, the matchup? I feel good about the matchup. I know she has fought at a lower weight class and you know she's just willing to get in there and, and fight anyone she's tough she's had four finishes she's born two. she's had four finishes mm-hmm. and um i, I think two a, a few by um way of guillotine and one by strike or two by strikes i'm not i'm not completely sure but so she's got like tkos and mm-hmm. uh sub finishes so you know um, obviously, you know, you're going to have um, 
you're gonna you're gonna want to keep the fight standing. We know we know where you what, what your plan is. I, I need your face again. Andrew. <laughs> I'm getting half your face. Oh, there you are. <laughs> are you talking about my hat or my face? <laughs> right. No, no. I got it all now. We're good. We're good. Before okay. I just had your nose down. Um, really? That's so weird. Yeah. Hold on. Maybe I need to swap. Yeah, we're good. Wait. We're good. Okay. Okay, we're good. <laughs> um, we're good. So her, you know, in her last fight, she went out against Sabina Matzo. She got knocked out. It was a pretty devastating knockout. It went viral. But that's got. How does that make you feel? Because you have a, a striking style too. Does it kind of show you that they, that's there for you, and that'll be available at some point? Like, what did you take from that fight? Um, with her fight, you know, between her and Mazo, uh -huh. um, I saw that she she's a lot slower than I am. And Mazo is even slower than me. Mm. So, you know, I felt like, she, you know, you could have seen that kick coming from a mile away and um, at least had plenty of time to block. But, you know, she, she dropped her hands a lot. So that's that's why she got caught. <laughs> if she had have had her hands up, you know, she wouldn't have gotten <clears throat> knocked out like that. So I'm sure that she's probably got her going to have her hands up this time. <laughs> I, um, I imagine she would. But, I, you know, I, I want to, I would like to keep it standing. I mean, I feel comfort or comfortable anywhere it goes. So you've actually looked super, your jujitsu has been super impressive the last couple of things that you've ended up on the mat and you've able to have been pretty dominant down there. Um, has it continued to progress in that way? Like, how are you feeling about your ground game these days? I feel great about it. Um, I feel like I have a pretty solid ground game. My wrestling's good. My jujitsu is good. And I, you know, I have a lot of great training partners. Um, so I feel good about it. Um, you know, I've seen on your social media, I, I was combing through it, see what was going on. Um, you, you, when you were advertising for uh, sponsors and, and things, you were saying this could very likely be my last fight, you know, uh, with LFA and on the, on the regional scene as well. Um, do you feel like the call is coming after this fight? Like, it, it, do you feel I, like this I is going to be? I do feel like the call is coming soon, but I just meant like this is going to probably be my last fight in my hometown because I'm fighting in Shreveport right, right. locally. So uh, just that, you know, it, it it's always like six months between fights that I ever get, or a year even, you know, before mm -hmm. I get to fight on, on my home homeland. So I just was telling everybody, you know, this is probably going to be the last time for – a very long time, you know, that I'm going to be able to fight in Shreveport. I am scheduled to fight for Invicta, but for on one of their next cards. Right. Um, and after that, we'll see what happens. Um, there's been a lot of exciting stuff happening. In, like, we've seen some fighters talk about going down to 25. When you start to mm -hmm. hear some of these big names going down to 25 and, and the division starting to take fold, how excited do you get at some of these potential matchups out there that you, you're seeing? I, I mean, I get really excited because, you know, and I want to fight the best in the world. Yeah. And I've, I've known that a lot of the 135ers were natural 125ers, mm -hmm. that, you know, most of them are just at 135 because it's the only way that they could be in the UFC. And I understand that. But I'm just more willing to stay at my, my weight class than, than move up and, and risk losing to someone that I shouldn't be losing to, you know? That's I should. very true, very true. Um, you, by anyone's standards, you, you've got to be considered one of the best 125ers in the world. I can't imagine anyone that doesn't have you on that list. Do, who who do you see as in like wanting to to maybe make that breakout fight with? Like you're seeing some of these people start to talk like I'm gonna like Paige Van Zant for instance is going to 25. Rose has mm -hmm. talked about possibly going to 25. Joanne has talked about wanting to to get a second belt at 25. So there's some mm -hmm. really 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 nice matchups that that are looking. At. Is there anyone that leaps out at you that's like oh I'd love to share the cage with her out of respect or just wanting to compete against the best? Well, Joanna, of course. Yeah. That'd be a great <laughs> uh, I fight. think that would be exciting. I mean, she's very quick. You know, she's got very, very oh. fast hands. Um, I know her her hands are definitely faster than mine, but I just feel like we would still be. We, I think that it would be stylistically, a, you know, a great matchup. I mean, I've got head movement. Most of the girls don't even have a head movement. They keep their head on a on a flagpole, and of course she's going to be able to bing them up, you know? Right. I mean, <laughs> you leave your, your your head there, and somebody on her level with the hands that she has, I mean, mm. you know, of, of course right. you're going to get you're gonna get eaten up. But I, I feel like it, it, as long as, that, you know, I have good head movement and my striking is, is pretty elite, I think, I think that it would be a fun match. Do you, have you seen anything in her fights that you've watched that have made you believe, like, you know, I could just this is a completely winnable fight for me. Like, have you seen things where you've been like, there's, there's holes there? Um, not that, 
Well, I mean, I don't think that she has like a whole lot of holes, mm -hmm. but I no. mean, you've never really seen her on the ground. True. But I mean, she's got a very good takedown defense. So I just think that, you know, I think that her and I would just have fun standing up. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be a great fight. I, I would I would uh, I would love to see that one go down. Um, I, I was watching the MMA Hour. I seen that you were on there Monday, and congratulations, by the way, great interview. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I, you were talking about a back injury uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. How's that? How's everything with this? My my back seems to have gotten like a lot better. Right. Um, I had some injections a while back. I don't know if that's helped my back or just me, you know, having my fights fall through. <laughs> Maybe that's helped. <laughs> I guess. Because I've been able to relax and just take some time off and give it some time to heal um so. does it affect because uh, what's the weight cut like for you like does it affect your cardio your ability to run anything like that like how's the weight how does it uh, alter the weight cut at all well i while my back was hurting well i mean it still it still gives me a little trouble but it's mm -hmm. not it's not like what it was i mean right. it was um it, like i was struggling running there for a while but i mean i still pushed through it because i needed the cardio but I, I just switched to treadmill and stopped running on concrete. And the treadmill seemed to help uh, a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and also stationary bike. So Yeah, bikes are huge. They get a lot of the impact. Mm -hmm. So that's good stuff. Um, that's good. I'm glad, to, I'm glad to hear you're going to be on point and everything's going well. And you had been complaining about the back issues. I remember you were talking about it at the Liz Taylor fight after the fight, right? You were saying, like, I was having these issues. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, um, I mean... It, it, it happened back in September of last year, and I just I ignored it, and I continued lifting really heavy and doing squats and deadlifts and all that. Like, I I uh, ended up, you know, I was training, and I got swept, and, like, my legs, my t upper body, my torso went one way, and my legs went the other, and, like, it just felt a big pop in my back, and then that burn sensation. Yeah. But, I mean, I got back up, and I continued training, and then a couple of weeks went by, and it just gradually got worse. Like I couldn't even like jump up on a couldn't jump up on the a box. I couldn't I couldn't pick weight up anymore. It was really it was hurt me. I couldn't even like sprawl. Couldn't couldn't wrestle. So it, it really screwed up my my uh, my training ability. So I had to start modifying everything. Once I went to the chiropractor, talked to him, then I went to a doctor and actually got like. Uh, you know, x-rays and MRIs and yeah. all CAT scans finally figured out what was wrong. Sweet. Well, I'm glad you're mending and you're on your, on your way. Uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. good. Definitely. Obviously. Um, do you have any idea who, who the in challenge, challenge may be on with Invicta? Who I don't know you yet. To fight? No, you haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything. I just know that I'm going to be on one of the next cards and I'm just happy and excited about that. Do you have a name? Do you have somebody you'd like to fight if you could pick the fight? Mm, I would like to fight for the title, <laughs> Amen, but right. I mean, that's not, I mean, I still have to like work my way up to that, I guess. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I guess I like the humbleness there. That's good. <laughs> um, so, uh, listen, I, I want to wish you all the best in the fight. I want to thank you for giving us some of your time. I know you're super busy because the fight's getting really close. Um, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And we're rooting for you. Oh, thank you so much. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you. Have a great night, Andrea. Appreciate it. You too. Talk to you all later. All right. Best of luck. Okay. <laughs> she's going to, she's going to do well. She's going to be a star for sure. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like the, this division is, is necessary. It's been necessary for a little while now and uh, she's going to be a star. For sure. Do you know what I think is really good for her personally? I think that the UFC not having a flyweight division until now. Yeah. It's let her is improve. good for her because she could gradually make that, you know, that move. Yeah. Right. Like, she wasn't forced because, you know, some people, okay, like for a perfect example, like um, Paige or Sage Northcutt. Yes. Yeah, right. True. It's like because they were so marketable, they weren't allowed to, to take the process. Yeah. It was like, no, dude, you're in like you're that's it. Yeah. You know, because the, the way the business is, right. It's like if I'm paying you X amount of dollars, you're not going on the undercard. No. Right. It's like if I'm paying you, you know, 50 grand, you're going to fight in the 50 grand slot and you're going to fight against somebody 50 grand worth. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So they get these tough. Fights. So I was so glad that she has been able to groom herself. Like she came up, she, you know, she lost a couple early on, but she learned, you know, the ground game really came along. The wrestling came along. Like, yeah. And at any time you can, you can relieve the pressure of like of the, the game itself. You know what I mean? Like all right. the things that come along with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, they got a good thing going over there at Karate Mafia, man. 
They got uh, Kendrick Williams is there. The dude's a beast. He I think, is a I, beast. I think Paige Van Zandt would be a, like a solid like first matchup. You know what I mean? I think it'd be one of those ones where the odds aren't right. You mm-hmm. know, the odds are all messed up. It would be an interesting one. It would be an interesting one because yeah. if, if Paige would have to grind her out because Andrea would pick her apart. I yeah, think. I feel like Andrea's probably better everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, but not sometimes. Like Paige is good, but but you know why I'd like to see her fight Jessica I. Yeah, that'd be good too. At 125. Yeah. I think that'd be a good fight, depending on what happens with Jessica, because Jessica's been around, and I think maybe, you know, she deserves uh, to fight the, you know, the vets, like the top. You know, she deserves that shot, I yeah. think. She's been around a long time. Andrea is just breaking in, you know, so she might have to have a fight or two before you get that fight, but who knows? It's, uh, it's not the thickest division, so we'll see what True. happens, right? Also, you know, what's interesting is to find out what Mackenzie Dern's going to do. Yeah. She hasn't fought in a while. No, she's hurt. She had knee surgery. I see, okay. Um, but... If she would now with the UFC having a 125 division, because she was only at 115 because there was that was her her only option. Yeah. So it's interesting to see what she does, and if she goes to 125, oh yeah. I never thought there would be a day when we'd be we'd be like anticipating another f- like female like weight division. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's yeah. amazing. Like it, the potential of this weight division is, is it's crazy. This is the most needed weight division of all the shit that people are talking about. Yeah. about 175, 165, all this nonsense. Not nonsense. It's needed in some cases yeah, too. Yeah. But this is the there's actual this, people waiting. There's people waiting. Not yeah, yeah. The, the, if you think what the gap is between you know talking about a, a thir- uh, or twenty pound difference mm-hmm. between one fifteen and one thirty. Paige Van Zandt was almost dying. Yeah, her parents dis- her parents said uh, that they would disown her if she if they caught her if she had to cut weight like that again they would just disown her. That's why she's she's like nope I can't do that. Crazy. Did yeah. they really say that? Yeah. Disowner. Yeah, they're disowner because she was she was in such bad shape. She fainted. Mo- I think I heard there, there was a report that that she uh, fainted multiple times. But disowning her seems harsh. But man, if you're sometimes when you have to when you're trying to protect your own, you know, you gotta do what's necessary. She's the type of person. Anybody who gets into a cage is the type of person that's gonna kind of take direction from most people. But it's your parents and your parents say, listen, we're not gonna support you at all anymore. You just have to listen. You know. Yeah. Well, you, you can't. But then again, like the parents have to understand, like she has no choice. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's the most needed division. Yeah. Do not have a choice, you know. Yeah. And then you got people, like uh, you know, fighting, uh, fighting at 135. Jessica, I she should not she, be fighting no. at 135. It's another reason why she should get a good, good like w- right. well-known fight because you know she she's, she's earned it. Yeah. She's been up there banging with big girls mm-hmm. just to do her thing. Yeah. So like, there's a there. There's gonna be no short of that. That's gonna be. I mark my words. That's gonna be one of the best divisions in MMA. Yeah. I think personally, yeah, I think that what we're gonna get from from fighters coming up from 115 and coming down from 135 is gonna be crazy, yeah, crazy. At least for the first little while, it was like when 155 when WC came WC came in and it, that 155 division was the overlap, yeah. The UFC had it and then WC had, and you remember how thick it was when Beautiful. they first came, yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, they had to cut a lot of people. It was ridiculous yeah. how deep that division was. Like yeah. it brought Donald Cerrone, Anthony Pettis. And like I, I, you know, I can't even remember Tons. all the rest. But there was so many mm-hmm. one fifty five or the Benson, the you know, exactly. There's so yeah. many that it brought, right? Mm-hmm. So I think we're gonna see the same kind of influx. It's gonna be interesting. It's a good show. Yes, yes, it Sick is. Six strong. Yeah, you know, this was another good week here. Um, we brought on. Uh, we had numerous really, really good guests. You know, Aaron uh, Pico, uh, Aaron off. Pico, Adam Piccolotti, um, Benito Lopez, Benito Lopez Zhu and Yan, who was getting ready. Pittsburgh, UFC Pittsburgh, he's going to do his thing, you know, uh, uh, a debut fight. And and then we close it out with the two LFA champs, you know, Derek Krantz and Andrea Lee. So, you know, it's a Big, great show. Oh, one of the biggest LFA cards got to be one of the bigger ones. Yeah, ever, yeah it's done. a good one. That's yeah. for sure. Def- two two big, two nice draws, I think. Yeah. That, well, KGB is definitely a huge draw. Plus, yeah. she's fighting at home in Shreveport. So, you know, should be good. But anyway, like I was saying, great show. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be back next week with some more great guests. This was me, Jason Sutcliffe, with Tristan Ketty. Say goodnight to episode 25. Thanks for staying with us. Quarter century. Quarter century. Peace. Peace.